welcome back to The Dad Chronicle, where we share stories from dads all around the world. I'm your host, Alex Albisu. This is episode 122. On today's episode, I speak with a dear friend of mine and a fellow podcaster, Rishi B, who is also a brand new dad. He brings a sense of jovialness and humor to the conversation in what is honestly a very stressful time to become a new dad. And first, Rishi shares his perspective of being a healthcare professional and what it's like to have a baby during a pandemic. One thing, unfortunately, is like the doctors are experiencing the pandemic much like we are. So it's almost like you're joining a team. Next, we talk about resources that new parents should look into if they don't know where to start. Regarding like the experiences that you and your wife had and uh, the experiences that my sister had and these women that I spoke to, it kind of pulls back the curtain a little bit because... Otherwise, you just kind of have the Hollywood version of birth, right? which is totally not how the birthing process works. And finally, Rishi shares why he and his wife held off on announcing that they were pregnant during these very uncertain times. You know, one of the things that I think is, is true about the Hollywoodized version of what it's like to have a baby is there is that uh, pregnant glow, right? And, you know, you talk to your friends and family as you're pregnant and uh, there's the baby bump and everyone's ooing and eyeing, and you have a baby shower and it's all great and wonderful. But we can't comfortably meet with uh, friends and family. Here's my conversation with fellow podcaster Rishi B. Rishi B, welcome to the Dad Chronicle. How are you today? Hey there, Alex. Doing well. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great, man. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Congratulations. You're a brand new dad. We're going to take a yes. moment to uh, to introduce you to the world. So why don't you go ahead and do that? How would you introduce yourself to this audience who may not know who you are? Hey there, everybody. My name is Rishi. Uh, I go by Rishi B online. Uh, I work as a healthcare specialist, and I have a healthcare podcast. And uh, healthcare is what I do, <laughs> is what I'm interested in. And um I'm also now interested in being a dad, as Alex mentioned, because it's like a whole new wife, hobby that you just jumped into. Yeah. Yeah. My <laughs> wife had a baby and I'm the father, if you could believe it. Wow. <laughs> that's how that works. Yep. OK, that, that's how that worked. There was a Maury episode immediately after. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the results of the Maury episode came in and I'm the father. I uh, was blessed with a beautiful baby daughter. Zolve is what I've named her what my wife and I have named her. It's a beautiful and, name. Uh, it's great. Yeah. Is that a family name? That's actually a made up name. Uh, <laughs> my wife, cool? uh, Badafsa, my lovely wife, Badafsa and I, we were really struggling because we didn't find out the gender of the baby beforehand. And we had a bunch of boy names and we were planning on having a bunch of girl names as well, but we could not come up with a girl name. That's a cool name. Us. That's a good job. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. And um, so, uh, one of the things just from my childhood is uh, fascination with Norway. This came from a reference to Norway in the Ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books. And uh, th there's a character there who always talks about the fjords of Norway. Anyways, long story short, uh, I had this fascination with Norway. And I was like, what if I look at Norwegian names? There was a name there that meant uh, daughter of the sun. And so I kind of twisted that around a little bit. And that's how Zolve came to be. Oh, that's beautiful, dude. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I mean, now I'm thinking about Jacob. I mean, Jacob's named after my great grandfather. And so I'm like, okay. wow, that's totally not original, Alex. <laughs> it's literally somebody else's name, Alex. That's literally what's going through my head right now. Well, that's great. Uh, I'm I'm so proud of you, man. I'm, I know that you and I have been, you. you know, talking about, um, you know, when you kind of told me ahead of time that you guys were expecting it super, super cool. And I was so excited to have you on the show because thank you. You're Alex. one of my favorite people that I've podcasted with. You and I go back to America's Next Top Podcaster together, the podcasters. Yes. You and I were partners on that. Um, mighty podcasters yeah oh yeah so fun so that was really great and uh, happy to have you on this show and, and let's talk about this journey to fatherhood so what was going through your mind take, take us back to arishi i don't know like uh, nine ten months ago at this point when you found out that you were going to be a dad yeah so man that was just nuts uh so my wife and i we were planning on having we 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 were planning and you know intentionally trying to have a child and um then pandemic struck and well so i should say uh covid popped up its head first right and so pandemic hadn't quite stricken at that point 
And then we're like, okay, well, there's this disease popping up its head, but whatever, it's a disease. We're America. We're better than diseases. And uh, so let's just keep going around with this child. Then pandemic struck. And we're like, oh, maybe it's not a great idea to have a child now. <laughs> and, uh, but then life kind of made its own decisions for us. Uh, Zolve made her own decision for us. And uh, there's no regrets at all. But uh, yeah, we were thrust into, you know, becoming parents in the middle of all this situation, as were you, Alex. Right. Um, I was going to say, yeah. I think that's one thing that you and I definitely have in common, considering our kids are just a couple weeks apart. Right. Uh, we had to deal with a birth in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, what was that like for you guys? I talked about it on this show, but I'd love for people to hear your perspective and what happened with you guys. I think the biggest impact was, you know, I think like in the and how Hollywood portrays the whole uh, miracle of childbirth is, you know, there's like Lamaze classes where everyone's wearing sweats and uh, <laughs> smiling at each other. And, uh, it, you know, spouses are lovingly standing behind their, their, uh, their wives, their pregnant wives. Yeah. And everyone's having a great old time, right. In these Lamaze classes. And um, I'm, I'm saying that kind of facetiously, but I do feel like that was probably the biggest impact is, a lot of these like classes that hospitals and uh, uh, I, Zolve was born at, through Michigan Medicine here at uh, here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and um, they canceled all the, those classes. And they have like you know baby CPR, uh, uh, new newborn classes, and and all this different stuff. And those are all just like thrown out the window. And so like some of that formal training we had to go through like just what we could find through like what to expect when you're expecting videos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, I felt, I feel like now that I'm at this side where I have the baby now, um, we kind of had to find our own education because I, I think like the way that the OBs and, and um, when, when you're pregnant, I, I think they kind of answer the questions that you're asking. And I think they kind of, they don't try to like unload too much. I think the idea is not, you know, releasing the Pandora's box and just like overwhelming you with so much information uh, because being a parent is quite a lot. But, um, you know, I do kind of feel like uh, if it wasn't for like this online age that we're in now with all this, with all this different stuff. And uh, we did, we were lucky enough. Uh, there's a local uh, system of doulas here. Uh, uh, shout out to Treetown uh, Doulas. Uh, they, uh, Doula Tony came by and um, she kind of condensed all those classes we otherwise would have gotten into like one day of just like a bunch of a bunch of discussion, which was super helpful. That was probably the only thing we really got in preparation. Yeah, that's one of the things that I've talked about a couple times on this show was when we were pregnant with Aria and they go, you know, you go to the, the birthing class. And the first thing that the lady told us was like, well, I don't want to say you wasted your money, but you wasted your money because <laughs> there's, you know, like you'll, you'll go in there and you'll figure it out. And I think, but I think that there is something to be said about going there and kind of getting a little bit of context ahead of time. And, and man, thinking about having a kid, you know, for us, we had the benefit of having a kid already and kind of seeing it in quote unquote normal circumstances. Not to say that there's really anything, any normal circumstance when you're having a kid because so much stuff comes up. But for you yeah. guys, this was, this is your first kid. You're sitting here having a, a baby in the middle of a pandemic. How did you guys prepare for that as a family with all of the kind of unknowns and what, what sort of issues did you guys kind of encounter along the way and how did you get through them? Yeah. You know, the biggest worry was, uh, me as the spouse, uh, I wasn't the one who was pregnant with my baby in case there was oh, some weren't? confusion there. Oh, my that wife. explains a lot. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> um, so my, you know, my wife, uh, with these, uh, OB appointments and the ultrasounds, because we were reading in the news about like how all these hospitals, uh, you know, to limit capacity and all that kind of stuff, they were only letting the mothers in. And so, you know, I was thinking like, oh, do I, will I have to take all these ultrasounds, you know, for, over like FaceTime or something like that? Uh, am, am I going to have to watch my baby being born on my phone, you know, like, am I going to be allowed to go in? And, uh, fortunately 
Um, it, it, as it turned out with the, with the hospital that we chose, things might have got a little dicey if my wife had tested positive for COVID. They do a pre-screening right. um, at the time of delivery. Um, but fortunately, uh, her test was negative. And all throughout the way, I was allowed to go up until the very end. I think they're uh, around the, the time that uh, the fall surge was happening. Um, uh, Michigan Medicine got really strict and uh, they weren't even allowing spouses in for like ultrasounds. Uh, wow. So um, so I missed uh, the last couple there, but um, I was able to be there and participate, which is really great. That's cool. Um, yeah. and. You know, I think this kind of goes back to having to rely on online stuff uh, to because I feel like the best thing you could do is, uh, you know, as expecting parents is just to buy a bunch of stuff. Like if it wasn't for like buy my baby and stuff like that, where like these people, obviously they're trying to sell you stuff, but still like, you know, we're first time parents. We don't know like, oh, do we need a basset? There's all this stuff like whether or not you really need a bassinet and all this kind of stuff. Right. And we ended up buying a bassinet because thankfully we're at a certain socioeconomic status where we could just buy stuff. And, uh, <laughs> um, so that kind of works out, right? Yeah. Um, so, so we just bought a bunch of stuff and uh, we were able to afford um, having all these things that, uh, and, and then after the baby, after Zilve came around, uh, figuring out what stuff that we bought of all these boxes lying around in our house. <laughs> you just what, pick, what is the stuff that we do? Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, you know, better over prepared. And I think that we were in a similar boat when we had Aria, um, okay. especially having a lot of family buying stuff for us because they, you know, this was the first grandbaby and like they were just ecstatic about having having Aria and uh, it was it was a whole thing. We had a townhouse with like not enough room for all the crap that this kid that wasn't even born yet you know, had. <laughs> But anyway, I yeah. think that there's something to be said about kind of preparing yourself and, uh, you know, ha having some of that stuff on hand. And, you know, for you guys kind of mentally, as you guys were trying to work through those, um, you know, thinking about parents who are listening to this right now who are maybe experienced or, or, you know, even like new parents, expecting parents, they've never had a kid before. They're about to have a kid during a pandemic like you and I just did. What sort of mindset would you encourage them to have what what sort of exercises or anything along those lines would you encourage them to take one thing unfortunately is like the doctors are experiencing the pandemic much like we are um so it's almost like it's almost like you're joining a team and the doctors are like the veterans you know like uh like these nba teams and stuff like that they'll always have like someone on the team you know the team is shooting for the uh is shooting for a ring that season right and so they'll have like the young upstarts who are like you know putting a lot of points on the board but they'll also have like the veterans who like have a couple of rings already uh to their name so i feel like that's kind of the mentality that you have to go in is um obviously the doctors are trained and uh, i'm not saying that I'm not, I'm not trying to make it too loose but i'm just right. saying like uh be a little bit open uh to to a discussion about like you know you be a part of that we'll kind of figure yeah. out yeah uh what's the best way to go for it that's a that's a really good way of putting it and, and you know part of what you've touched on a few times is just for and this is especially true for a lot of dads this is a big reason why i've made this show is that there's a, a big lack of resources and ways to kind of feel prepared as a parent i mean one of the things that we talk about a lot on this show though is the fact that like kids don't come with a manual. You got to like kind of figure it out. But, you know, that said, uh, you know, what sort of ways you talked a little bit about some of like maybe some of the videos and stuff that you guys would watch, but what are some of the ways that you guys kind of prepared yourselves for that moment of becoming a parent? Yeah, education I think is something I'm very passionate about now. Now that I have my sweet baby Zilve, uh you know, like, like you're saying, there's no manual, but it just seems really odd to me. Um, you know, Alex, the episodes that you had, uh, with your wife, um, earlier, uh, regarding, you know, your situation before, uh, Jacob came around. Right. Um, 
those episodes you did, uh, and, and of course, a number of your other episodes in your podcast. I also had a couple conversations with women for my podcast, and I feel like those conversations, and also with my uh, oldest sister who has three, who has uh, has three children. Like I feel like those were like the most helpful for me. Good. And which which is great that those resources were available to me, but also it's like seriously there's like <laughs> you, you know I have to go I, I have to go like find these conversations and kind of pull back the and, and what the value is behind those conversations uh and, and regarding like the experiences that you and your wife had and um the experiences that my sister had and these women that I spoke to it kind of pulls back the curtain a little bit because otherwise you just kind of have the Hollywood version of birth, right? which is totally not how the birthing process works. It's very, I mean, it's, it's really brutal on the woman, you know, there's no way, there's no other way to paint this. It's, right. it's really hard on the woman who's uh, giving birth, uh, whether it's through natural delivery or through C-section, like either way, it's like really intense. And you as a spouse, uh, so for me, like, you know, I'm not necessarily being directly impacted by this. Uh, I mean, it really is trauma, right? Yeah. I'm not necessarily being directly impacted by it because I'm not, you know, the one at physically going through it. But like b- having some experience of like how much like I don't know, I guess, like th- those conversations were helpful to me on how much I don't know about the birthing process. And so right. I'm going into the birth of Zolve, like just super open. Right. And I'm just willing to, to help. Cause I know a little bit now of just like how many different ways, uh, things can kind of go left, you know? Um, and, and, you know, I, I, cause I made myself open earlier. Now I know to make myself open at the time, uh, that Zolve is coming around. And, um, th- th- I feel like that was like the best preparation is just being open. Um, you know, uh, like my wife, she watched a lot of like Instagram videos and I, I, it, from like streamers who are like moms and they have like kind of mom blog type of videos and stuff. Right. And a lot of times I'd be a little judgmental of those videos. Like I'd kind of tease her for watching all that stuff. But now like that was probably her best education that she got outside of like medical questions. She was able to get answered by her OB. Yeah. Um, so well, because it's be real, open. you know yeah. what I mean? Like that's a like like no matter how kind of quote unquote cheesy some of that content is, and uh, you know I put out some videos on YouTube and stuff myself, and people probably look at that some and, and say it's cheesy, but frankly the point is is like it's genuine. It's like real, uh, real person kind of giving a talk, and there's something to also be said about for women, especially thinking about your wife going through postpartum, the. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a gracious way of saying this, but like what happens to the woman's body physically yeah. after all that is way more intense than I had. I had no idea any of that stuff happened. And my wife was even like, nobody told me about all this until like she talked to a coworker and she was like, Hey, right. but you've got all that stuff ready to go for after you have the baby. And my wife was like, wait, what? And so <laughs> you're just kind of yeah. like, what do you, where do you go to get all that? So you just happen to, come across some of that on the internet like it, it is kind of crazy yeah and like so my wife had a c-section and we didn't know that she was having a c-section uh up until like it, the subject wasn't even brought up until about a week before zolve was born but at that time there was still a chance so zolve was uh, breached and, and and breached was a whole concept that i had no idea about until zolve was breached um, and breached which, in the context of feet first or head the wrong way or like upside down? Uh, or? Yeah, it was feet, feet first. first. Okay. And, um, it, and, and so like, so, so like babies, okay, they're, they're quote unquote supposed to come out head first, right? Right. But like, there's just different, there's just a different way. There's no like right or wrong way. Okay. But like, so it's okay that they're breached. It just means that uh, the chances for a natural delivery are reduced. And this is something we didn't know about until a week before Zilve came around. Oh, man. And then they're like, oh, hey, she could still move around and uh, things, and then you'll still have a natural delivery. But then like, uh, we go for an ultrasound a few days after that. And this is 
uh, three days before Zilvay's born, we would go for an ultrasound and they're like, okay, your baby's still breached. There's no chance that the baby, there's a very minimal chance that your baby's going to be uh, moving into position for a natural delivery. Uh, the baby has to come now. The baby might even have to come today. <laughs> and we're oh, like, oh, what the heck? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. And so like, these are all the things like, and, and you know, like, I feel like, once again, the Hollywood, ver the Hollywoodized version of birth, like all babies are coming out uh, from the vag, right? Oh, like, yeah. It, everything is natural. And clean as but, can be. Yeah, exactly. Clean as can be, clean as a whistle. Uh, <laughs> Mom looks great. She like, still has her makeup on. There's yeah. Right. But that's not how it is at all, man. And, and now, like talking to a lot of people about how Vanessa had a C-section, um, and now I'm finding out about all these from hearing from all these women about like how they also had C-sections. It, it seems like, cause our doctor was saying that C-sections, um, she, that like about 30% of her deliveries that she's been involved in, she would say are C-sections, but it seems like it's a lot more common than 30%. And so I, I don't know, there's Happens some a lot. kind of, yeah, there's some kind, I don't know. Cause I, I want to say like, like over half of the people I've talked to have had C-sections. Oh yeah. And that's one of the things so like, I mean, and, and, and people sometimes it's the same thing like with, uh, with miscarriages, like what we dealt with earlier this year, it was, uh, you find out how many people have actually been through a miscarriage. It's like taboo for some reason to talk about, or, you know, I don't think C-sections are quite as bad anymore, but I think there, there were some women who were like upset that they weren't able to do it naturally for whatever reason. You know, and that and, and maybe I get it. There's certain expectation that you have or, or whatever. But I think at the end of the day, you, you want a healthy, happy baby and a healthy, happy mom, you know, and I think that that's you do what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. And as a spouse uh, for my wife, so my wife has never had up until her C-section had never had like any major surgery at all. Oh, wow. And so she was. Yeah. So she was freaked out. She's never been under anesthesia. Um, which she didn't have to go fully under anesthesia for the C-section, but, um, you know, she was freaking out about having to have anesthesia at all and, um, uh, also having a major surgery done on her. And it's like, where's that? Where's, where's that pamphlet that I have to, uh, guide my wife through, by the through way, her first like, major surgery. So, and thinking about you and your passion for healthcare and medicine and, and all that, like, what is going through your mind in how you coach your wife through that? And I'd be interested what your thoughts are on this as well. Uh, sure. you know, being a two time father, but, um, I feel like the, there's kind of a loss of ego that's necessary. Um, I, I have to be open that my wife is experiencing something that I'm not going to experience. So, you know, maybe the support that I can provide is just being a human that's listening to her um, and just kind of being around, which yeah. I feel like is also the skill set necessary to be a father. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's that, you know, that's very well said. And, you know, thinking about your wife going through anesthesia for the first time, I mean, and she's really nervous about that. You could have all the, the healthcare knowledge in the world, but at the, at, you know, at the base of it all, being a good partner, a good spouse, a good listener is like pretty quintessential to just handling that stress in general and, and helping them manage that. You know what I mean? So there's something yeah. to be said about that. Yeah. And, um, you know, there is family members who is freaking my wife out. This is before, um, uh, this is before we found out we were having a C-section, but, uh, you know, there's like family members warning my wife about the dangers of getting epidural. Oh, geez. It, you know, you're just like filled people are just coming at you like left and right, because on the one hand, your best resources for information are your friends and family, but also your best resources for misinformation are your friends yeah. and family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, like what, one thing that has, that was really helpful is um, kind of finding like some really good, like uh, books, like resources, uh, the what to expect when you're expecting videos. I feel like those kind of maybe, uh, culturally, they may be a little cheesy or something like that, but they were super helpful for us to kind of understand like yeah. um, how the baby was growing. Um, 
there's this book, uh, Crib Sheet, that was very helpful for me. I'm a very kind of data and numbers guy, and Crib Sheet provides data and numbers to like how, um, what are the like the best practices for a new baby? Oh, and, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. So just stuff like that that could help me, like kind of help my wife and I kind of conceptualize yeah. uh, what it's going to be like as a parent because we're not parents yet. Like that, that was those those resources were very helpful. Yeah, no, that's great. That's awesome. Now I want to take it to the point where you met your daughter for the very first time. What was it like holding your baby girl? Oh man, let me tell you that that was just that was just craziness. So, uh, so at, I don't know if this is at all hospitals or something, but the spouse, uh, they get to for a C-section declare officially declare the gender of the baby. I don't, oh. so I, I don't know if that's a thing everywhere. Uh, I don't know. They just yelled it was a boy when he came out, and same thing with Aria except a girl. Okay, so like they gave us the option of them doing that or me doing that. So uh, we said that I would do it. And uh, so Zolve was born, and you know, I've, I, this is the first time I'm seeing a baby being born. And this is just stamped into my memory. I don't think I'm ever going to forget this. But uh, uh, so. Uh, the C-section's happening, and um, and and there's like a curtain uh, separating my wife's head from the rest of her body, where there's like a dozen, it seems like a dozen people where we're yep. standing around the rest of her body, and then they're like, "Hey, Dad, your baby's almost here," and I'm like, "Okay," and then, <laughs> "Hey, Dad, your baby's here," and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> so I stand up and uh, look over the curtain, oh, and. There's my uh, baby girl. Oh, um, cool. Well, well, okay. So there's my baby, right? And the baby has her has the umbilical cord, and they're like, "Okay, Dad, we need you to declare the gender." And so I'm seeing the baby, and I'm seeing the umbilical cord, but I can't see like what's under the umbilical uh-huh. cord. <laughs> so I'm like, "Wait, is that is that a really long penis, or like <laughs> what am I what am I looking at here?" <laughs> And they kind of shift around the umbilical cord. And I'm like, oh, it's a bouncing, beautiful baby girl. Aww. And um, it, that's just forever going to be like stamped into my memory. It's um, <laughs> just like the, the sweetest thing. And also, um, I think I mentioned this earlier. Uh, you know, we didn't find out the gender of the baby beforehand. Oh, you so didn't? We, no. So we were struggling at the time before to come up with girl names. We had a bunch of boy names. So my immediate thought was I said, it's a bouncing, beautiful baby girl was, oh shit, it's a girl. We don't have any names for girls. Well, I knew that you you, you had mentioned that you had trouble coming up with girl names, but I didn't realize that you guys had waited until that moment to find out the gender. Dude, that's good on you. My sister did that with her two kids, but Deanna and I were like, too much of a control freak to like <laughs> gotta know and you know they, yeah. they misgendered <laughs> they misgendered we thought we were having a girl for a while and then all of a sudden uh the 32 week ultrasound said jacob was a boy and so that was all oh, really oh yeah that was great he, he was just hiding it and then th- there it was in full sight 32 weeks wow. uh so we were like okay gotta return everything and rebuy stuff uh but right. we could oh my god <laughs> yeah. we, we wouldn't have ever been able to do that so i mean we're we the why did you do that to yourself? I'll just ask, like, why would you do that to yourself, Rishi? Why wouldn't you find out the gender? <laughs> uh, this kind of goes back to uh, an earlier question about, like, how COVID impacted things. Um, so uh, there there was the effect of my wife and I as far as um, what support we could get from our uh, provider, which I, I have to say the hospitals are all great. Uh, I'm not trying to do anything like that. But, you know, classes and all that stuff and preparation – and, um, but one of the things with the pandemic is you can't, you know, one of the things that I think, um, is, is true about the Hollywoodized version of what it's like to have a baby is there is that, uh, pregnant glow, right. And, um, you know, you talk to your friends and family as you're pregnant and, uh, there's the baby bump and everyone's ooing and eyeing and you have a baby shower and it's all great and wonderful. Um, but we can't comfortably meet with uh, friends and family. And, and, right. and then there's this whole thing about like, so, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, your uh, miscarriage that you had earlier and stuff like that. And then it's, 
So then for my wife and I, we were like, oh, how much do we want to kind of share online, you know, um, right. about our uh, about our baby who's not here yet? And quite frankly, Alex, uh, the experience that you went through, and I also have uh, some family members who also unfortunately went through those experiences, um, you know, that that can take a lot out of a person. And now we're learning about all these different things that can happen um, and that could, you know, all these different things that could happen uh, that are. Yeah. It's just, you don't want to put that out there and have all, with all the other negativity going on with COVID and everything right. compiling and, you know, compounding. Yeah. Right. It's how much pressure do we want to put on ourselves? And so we kind of made the decision, well, we're already not really like meeting up with people. So yeah. maybe in that way, some of the pressure is just kind of organically relieved. Right. And um, so we didn't put anything out there. And, uh, and, and so part of that was like, okay, so there's like this whole mystery aspect, right? <laughs> but what if we just don't find out the gender of the baby? <laughs> yeah. Good uh, on you guys. So, yeah, yeah. It it actually I was the one pushing, really pushing for that. I feel like really? the gender of the baby is uh one of the few with with the age of the internet that we're in, yeah. like I feel like you can know everything. So this is like one of the few mysteries left in the world is like what is the gender <laughs> of the baby? Yeah, that's and so that's a really yeah. you know, my sister said the same thing, and I think there's a uh, there's something really to be said about that because I am full on like embracing the, Oh, wh what's the answer to that? Yeah, let me Google it. And you know, that's fine. Uh, and I kind of get, a, I find myself a little impatient and I want to know things. And when I think about <laughs> not knowing the gender of my child, I'm like, oh, but I have to buy things and I have to, yeah. get, you know, I want to mentally prepare and all that. But, but it really truly is. It's a beautiful mystery of, you know what that what's that going to look like nine months later? You know, yeah, you have this, um, you have this beautiful surprise. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, so we're cocooned, and you know, we're kind of keeping the pregnancy to ourselves and everything. And we just had our what to expect when we're when you're expecting videos. And um, so just just a little inside for everyone who you know is not a parent yet. But these what to expect when you're expecting videos, they'll kind of tell you week by week. Uh, they'll compare the size of the fetus to, uh, you know, some object so you can kind of understand how big the baby is. And the first video we watched was uh, the baby is the size of a blueberry. And we were kind of calling our baby because we weren't finding out the gender. We were referring to the baby as blueberry <laughs> all throughout the uh, pregnancy. So, it. yeah, yeah. So we were cocooned in our little magic mystery tour uh, with our little blueberry. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Really now, like you said, I mean, this whole parenting thing comes with a whole lot of surprises. You guys take her home. I mean, what was going through your mind, the you know, in these first, like, here you are about a month later with uh, with your baby girl. Like, what's life like now? Um, so life is, you know, being a parent is is amazing. Um so one thing that I was afraid of before Zilve came around, um, and I think this will still be true, but one thing I was afraid of for myself and being a new dad is being present for my daughter. Um, you know, just like making time to be there um, and, and you know, just being around for, for all the different things. Because, right. you know, my relationship with my daughter is a little bit different than my wife's, right? Because my wife um, can fortunately breastfeed. And this is another thing that they may not teach you in the Hollywoodized versions is uh, not everyone can necessarily breastfeed. Uh, right. Just a little side note. But uh, my wife fortunately can breastfeed. And um, so she, her relationship with our daughter is a little bit different. And so anyway, so that was kind of a thought going in is... Um, like, am I, am I going to have to, how, how much of a stress is it going to be on me to make time to be a dad? I, I, I know I'm saying that in kind of a very blunt way, but no, um, no, you're right. There's, it's a complete shift in your dynamic and how you live and how you function as an adult, because your wife had been making all these changes to her lifestyle, being pregnant. And, you know, there, there's, 
something that happens there for women. I, I think just kind of seeing what Deanna went through, like she was able to kind of prepare. But for men, you, you're watching your wife change. But it really, I feel like it hits us like a freaking train, you know, as soon as we hold that kid yeah. for the first time. Right. Like, I don't know well, how else to explain it, but. He, yeah. And that's the thing is, I I think the train for me and this thought, this fear that I had of, um, you know, hey, Rishi, you need to make sure you're being present for your daughter. Uh, what I didn't expect is just how naturally I wanted to be around for my daughter. Like, yeah, it's not even a question to me. You know what I mean? That's beautiful. Um, Hey, yeah, by the way, that's that's I've talked to a lot of dads on this show who have had trouble with that. Uh, um, you and I are similar in that way that you kind of jump in and you're like, yeah, like I'm ready. Um, but some dads, it takes longer to build that relationship. So I think that that's that that's really rad. So, are, are yeah. You, and yeah, go ahead. Well, and, you know, like. OK, so maybe it came a little quicker for me, like like you know I, I have no experience with like diapers actually before uh Zolvay was around um i thought my best skill was burping babies <laughs> so that was the only thing that i had coming in because based off my experience with my nieces um i i, I think i'm a pretty good burper but other nice. than that like i had zero experience changing diapers or any of that stuff um just 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 be there uh, for your daughter, it, it'll come. You know what I mean? Uh, they're not expect uh, be there for your children. You know, they're not expecting you to be uh, Babe Ruth out of, right on the bat. You know, like yeah. uh, it's a learning process for you too, and uh, you'll all learn together, and it'll be great. Dude, that's beautiful. That's so well said. And I think a, a, there's a lot of patience that comes along with that, which is really hard for some people. But it, it'll, you know, you you're figuring it out. The kid is learning how to be a human. They're figuring it out, you know, like just be yeah. patient, work through it. And I think there's a lot to be said about where we as fathers in our situations, you know, kind of take a cue from our own dads. And, you know, I've talked a lot on the show about how my dad has been an inspiration for me and, you know, a bunch of other men in my life have been an inspiration for me and in how I approach fatherhood. Uh, what about your dad? Yeah, my dad, um, uh, it, it just like, one of the biggest rocks, the, the biggest rock in my life. And, um, you know, one thing that has really stuck with me is, um, is my dad has talked quite a bit about the importance of, um, and, and he talked about this in the context of himself personally, of course, but, you know, he, he talked a lot about, about uh, parents just kind of being around for their children and balancing kind of uh, the work-life balance and having to make those decisions. So that was something that um, that going into me becoming a father, it, and you know, this might tie back to just me wanting to be present for Zolve. Is I kind of just based off of my um, discussions with my dad and and all that kind of stuff. Um, some of his experiences, I was able to just kind of organically know that kind of coming in, that that's something that is important. Probably something that I'm going to struggle with too. Uh, yeah. You know, but like acknowledging that struggle and, um, you know, making a decision after that. Yeah. It, it's, it's not easy. Like coming into this as a first time dad, it's not easy. And, you know, I think, I think best of intentions are always there. Well, most of the time are, are, are there for, for men coming into fatherhood. But sometimes it's, it's like, you know, it, you have to like find your rhythm and, and your groove. And, you know, I, I think that when we look up to great men, like, you know, your dad and, and my dad and seeing the, the role that they played in our lives, we, it's a good center. Like you said, it's like a good for rock. Sure. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, for sure. um, yeah, that, that's and, really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't know about you, Alex, but I find myself day by day, slowly turning exactly into my dad. Oh, yeah. And, um, so one thing for me has been, you know, my dad was always full of those dad jokes and stuff. And, um, you know, as hard as I fight it, uh, day after day, I'm making really dumb 
dad jokes. You're making uh, yes. so no, you're not. My daughter fortunately is too young to jokes. understand them. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah. That that's that's exactly your role as a dad. You're supposed to be doing that. Yep. You're doing a good job of it, Rishi. By the way, exactly. I feel like you've been making dad jokes before you were even a dad. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's definitely my will forte is uh, making some really bad dad jokes and puns. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, you're, you're doing a great job. So Thank I, you. I always like to, um, you know, think about, a, you know, some words of wisdom for people listening to each episode of the Dad Chronicle and thinking about your journey to getting here, kind of dealing, you know, with the unexpected from COVID to really jumping in blind <laughs> to parenting like we, you know, we all do, but sharing that journey um, up to this point. And then the the idea of jumping right into fatherhood and how it kind of like upends your life, you know, like there's, uh, you know, it's like now you're a dad. How, how do you shift that prioritization and, and so on? And, and you're talking about really making that time for your daughter. Uh, so, you know, kind of thinking about all that culminated together, what sort of words of wisdom would you provide the audience at home listening to this? Uh, I think the words of wisdom, the best that I could come up with is be open. So for me, and so for me, it was, I have to be open that there's just things that I don't know yet that I might know as I make myself open to learning those things, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. I don't know how to be a dad uh, before Zolve came around. Um, but hey, if I make myself open to wanting to be a good father for her, maybe I'll pick up those things along the way. Uh, so I'm talking to the nurses. Huge shout out to the nurses at Michigan Medicine, by the way. Uh, uh, those, those people, lactation consultants, midwives, uh, nurse practitioners, you are all like uh, just angels on earth. Yep. Um, there's no other way I could. And they're that, that's not hyperbole at all. Nope, they're uh, incredible. They're yeah, doctors are great, but uh, the nurses are really there for the day to day. And um, so, anyways, uh, I was asking these nurses, uh, like, hey, how? Do, what's the best way to change the diaper? Hey, how do I do the swaddle? Um, I'm just absorbing all that stuff. Hey, uh, what can I do? while my, is there anything I could do while my wife is breastfeeding? Um, it turns out there's a lot a spouse can do to kind of help with the breastfeeding process. It turns out the breastfeeding process isn't really easy. And so, uh, support is, is, uh, can be really helpful, especially in those uh, early days and, um, uh, just making yourself open, be open. Right. That's a beautiful way of, of putting it. I think the more, open we are to perspectives, which is a big part of what this show is about. Opening our heart to new ideas makes things way more clear for us to uh, to to learn and to absorb and, and figure out how we bring the goodness, that goodness into our own lives. And, and Rishi, you did a great job of sharing some of that goodness here on this show. So appreciate your, your perspective. That's really, really good uh, stuff. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, man. And now I do want to give you an opportunity to tell folks at home about your podcast, which I've been on. And yes. uh, so, so tell them about it. Yeah. So uh, Alex has been, has been a guest on Healthy Schmelty. Uh, uh, first talking about how Game of Thrones, what are some healthcare things from Game of Thrones? Yeah, that was a fun conversation. Could, I was, yeah, I was yeah, thinking, was it was one. so funny. Before we even set this up, I was thinking about that conversation and how much fun that was. I think it was leading into that whole Game of Thrones, you know, the new Game of Thrones coming out on HBO. Yeah, but. yeah. That was a fun um, conversation. So we talked about like how you could take like Renaissance things and we were talking about how Renaissance stuff, um, healthcare things that happened in the Renaissance era. And it sucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really did suck. Uh, particularly for women. I must yeah. say. <laughs> um, but uh, Healthy Schmelty is the name of my public health podcast and um, it's helping you keep healthy by sorting out all the Schmelty from the news. Uh there has never been more healthcare in the news than there is right now, oh, folks. <laughs> to, Lots of it. Uh, there's too probably too much healthcare, and um, you know if you're trying to make sense of a particular situation, probably COVID, uh, it could be really difficult to find out like what are the facts here. Uh, you know, finding out information about vaccines, uh, different things like that. Um, so uh, Healthy Schmelty is there to kind of help you make your way through all that. Um, 
uh, Alex has been on, as mentioned, uh, I have an episode coming up talking about how um, police reform is including some aspects of like, including mental health professionals and behavioral health specialists. That's a episode coming up. Nice. Also talking about um, some uh, common rumors about uh, vaccines, the COVID vaccines that are false. Uh, so uh, different episodes like that, uh, very open to different topics and uh, please check it out. Go to rishibi.com or find Healthy Schmelty at the podcatcher nearest you. Nice. And we'll have links to those in the show notes so you guys can get all of that there. Again, our guest has been Rishi B. Go follow him on uh, on Twitter and everything. You're just at Rishi B, right? B-E-E? B-E-E. That's right. Rishi B on Twitter and all the things. Again, Rishi B, our guest. Thank you so much for being here, my man. Thanks, Alex. Big thanks to Rishi B for being on the show and providing his perspective on being a new dad, especially during these uncertain times. Wishing him and his dear, beautiful family all the best. Stay healthy, stay safe, and check out everything that Rishi B is doing by checking out the links in the show notes below. So thanks again, Rishi B, for being our guest. As a reminder, if you would like to reach out to the show or contact me, all of our contact information is over at thedadchronicle.com. And if you'd like to support the show, head over to supportadad.com, where you can become a patron and get some cool rewards. Check out all the different reward levels. Even $1 a month helps tremendously. So big thanks to all of our patrons. So remember, be good to yourself and be good to others. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. If you like this show, check out more great content at incastmedianetwork.com.